fat guy in a little coat. Who told you you can eat my cookies? You're chewing the smalls. <laughs> Shut up! Oh, that's nonsense. Sports cards and more. This is one of my favorite cards in the hobby, Hot Take. It's a great time to buy the iconic 1980 Topps Bird and Magic Rookie. In a PSA 10, they're only 23 and it sells for half a million dollars just, just two weeks ago. In a PSA 9, it's selling for $16,000 and there are just over 600 in that pop count. In a PSA 8, $3,360. There's the fall of PSA 7. You can get it for just over $1,000 and comparing it to a PSA 6, $721. Finally, we look down at a PSA 3, $425 to get this iconic card in your collection. The next question is rank these four second year quarterbacks. I'm going to let the recent PSA 10 comps decide. In last is Desmond Ritter, surprisingly at $55 in a PSA 10 prism. Sam Howell at $60. Kenny Pickett selling for $123 and Purdy just beating him out at $125. The uh, wrong way. Yeah, baby, Bo <laughs> baby Bosa needs to know which way to turn him. Here, here's the uh, wrong way. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. One time, baby. One time. Oh! Oh, my God! Holy crap! I'm sorry I yelled. Oh, my God! Oh my god! Card Raw recently sold for $760 in a PSA 10, sold for just shy of $1,500. Oh. 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 Life doesn't always go according to plan. That's why they made sports cards. How about this nonsense? I just started collecting again a few months ago. My goal was to get the entire lineup for the Braves rookie patch auto. The last one I needed was Marcel Ozuna. They've been extremely hard to find. Finally found a beauty on eBay. A one of one, no less. Only one of one I've ever owned. I couldn't stop looking at it. And then my new puppy got a hold of it. Can't believe this. Post had 51,000 votes. And the winner is... Yep, no doubt about it. Never seen it? Go do yourself a favor. Take a little trip. Mbappe's one-year deal from Al Hilal could be wild. $776 million for one season. That would equal $2.1 million a day. It gets crazier. They would actually be paying $1.1 billion, including the transfer fee. Mbappe's World Cup rookie card in the PSA 10 goes for $120. And SGC 9.5 originally sold for $54. Yeah, Rabio. Voilà, il est récupéré, il n'y a pas de faute sur Léo Messi et que le moigny est parti. Tête de Kylian Mbappé. Allez, Allez Kylian If he takes the deal, it will be more than the combined annual salary of the top 15 highest paid NBA players. It will be the team payrolls of both the Mets and Yankees combined. It would be more prize money than Djokovic, Nadal, or Federer earned in their whole career. Oh, and add Murray into there. According to score, every running back in the NFL combined makes $334 million. Not to rub it in. Getting into the running back story just a little bit more. Joe Mixon and Aaron Jones took pay cuts. Zeke, Dalvin Cook, and Leonard Fournette were cut. Tagged but no deal. Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, Saquon Barkley. However, Saquon Barkley, during me making this video, signs a one-year, $11 million deal. However, he could still be tagged next year. Someone writes, upside for rookie cards costing two to $5,000. So many guys like Eddie Dela Cruz, Julio Franco, Justin Herbert, Lawrence, Joe Burrow, and to some degree, Mahomes have rookie cards that cost close to 10 grand. Even more than some goats, where's the upside? Am I missing something? Kenny Pickett, I'm talking to you. I mean, this is a decent post. Now, you have to recognize that the base rookie cards, like some of the past or older players that only had base, they're not going for more than the Hall of Fame goats. Hard market changes, and yes, some of these serial number RPA prism cards, they're probably maybe overpriced. Absolutely zero upside. Even if they turn out to be all-time greats, all these cards will depreciate over time. People buying players they have never seen to pay to flip. I don't know. Someone's going to be holding the bag. I agree and disagree with that statement. People buy them because they like cards. For some people, 10K is pocket change. Very true. It's all relative. Hype monster. No way any of these guys should be going for more than Griffey, but they don't know any better. So the entire industry is based on hype.
It's complicated, it's multi-layered, and nobody really knows, to be honest. The players that you're referring to, Griffey, he doesn't have one-of-ones or auto rookie patch cards. No one knows the future, and if we go back to that time, the last time the Raiders have won a playoff game, there was no iPhone, no Facebook, no Windows 7, no Xbox 360, no Uber. And the list goes on and on. I believe in 2003 was the last time they won a playoff game. I should know, I have season tickets. Been a diehard fan since 1990. This Billy Ripken card, 1989 Fleer, is famous for all the wrong reasons. And, well, Cal Ripken did an interview recently and talks about the card. Billy Ripken face card was funny because I think it's really funny. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, so, uh, it's funny is that uh, many people made up stories that uh, he was... Uh, it was a practical joke, and then they got him uh, pretty good. But the fact of the matter is, he wrote it. I mean, he used to write things on the bottom of his knob of his bat so he could find the bat. Right. And mm -hmm. so, because bats sit in a big barrel sometimes, and you have numbers that all look the same, he would write expressions on it. And the expressions were innocent in the beginning, and then they started to get a little bit less innocent. And when he grabbed his bat, and uh, one of the card companies asked, Hey, Billy, can I? how about a, card, how about a shot for Fleer or Don Ross or Topps? He put his bat on his shoulder, mm -hmm. and they took a picture, and it just so happened that the uh, what he wrote became visible to the card. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess we'll dispel any of these uh, rumors. He wrote it. Yeah. Um, I will say, song. though, um, he used to write in this thin Sharpie, not a thick Sharpie. Interesting. But when it was on the card, it seemed like it was thick. It's very mm -hmm. visible. So yeah. I'm wondering if it was, if it was, uh, it might have been enhanced for the collectible. Interesting. Means. Interesting. Oh, so, so you, you might want to research that. You think the yeah. card company made it more visible so that they could retract the card and it would be I worth I don't know, more. but it, it might be worth looking okay. into. Yeah, you're very woke. I like that. <laughs> Interesting. I like that, Cal. In a PSA 7, the card is currently selling for $75 and a PSA 8. It hovers around $100, give or take, and a PSA 9. Nine, you can buy this card for $170. Your side 200 and a PSA 10. This notorious card sells for $400. A couple of recent Michael Jordan sales, the 1997 Z Force PSA 10. There's only seven of them, sold for $17,000 on July 16th. Back in 2022, it sold for $13,000. That's a $4,000 increase. The 1995 Metal Michael Jordan Scoring Magnets. This is PSA 10. There are only 34 of them, sold for $3,700 on July 13th. Back in May of 2022, it's over $3,300. Next up, new to the hobby, and you guys seem to know your stuff. I see the PSA 10 one go for about $2,000 to $2,500 right now. That's the two next to us. Would this SGC 10 go for the same? Would it be better or worse? And if so, where would y'all get the comps from? They should be the same, but the reality is PSA will always be valued at higher prices. My rule with them is SGC and other companies are usually 75% of PSA's value. Hypothetically should be the same ballpark, but you'll learn in the hobby that PSA prices will always fetch a little bit higher. From my experience, I've sold SGC 10s for around 65-70% to 70 of what a PSA 10 would go for, so this card should sell around $1,500. When proven time and time again, PSA value is superior to that of SGC, $1,800 to $1,900 is an SGC 10. It makes no sense to me, but PSA 10 is usually a good 25-50% to 50 higher than SGC, so if you're primarily a seller, go with PSA. The exact card went for $2,200 yesterday. Were you the buyer or seller or just an interested third party? I don't understand people posting these questions on Facebook groups or any other groups because the answers are out there. The card sold for $2,200. The previous two cards were PSA 10s and they sold for roughly the, exactly the same price, $2,050 and $2,000. So in this case, they're equal. While in most cases, the comments are right that PSA does hold a premium value. Literally while making this video, I got more news. Brock Purdy underwent off-season elbow surgery and has been cleared without restriction and he's ready to go to training camp via Adam Schefter. Possible deals, Tiger Woods 2001 Upper Deck, 
PGS9. This is his rookie card. It's selling for $60. The most iconic golf card of all time. Frank Thomas 1990 rookie card. PSA 8 top selling for under 12 bucks. At one time, this was the card to get. Hulk Gray 1990 Impel Marvel Universe Base PSA 10. $70. Average sells $84. Joe Burrow, this is not his rookie, 2021 Optic, My House, PSA Town, selling for 60 Is this card going to continue to rise or fall? I don't view this as a possible deal because it's not a rookie. Let's make this the best sports card show on the planet. Give a like and subscribe if you're not already. Look out for more episodes of Oh The Nonsense every Monday and Friday. Any closer to my endorsement from in and out all you can eat forever. I can gladly report we're zero days without nonsense. <laughs> What up, everybody? This is Robert Ory, a.k.a. Big Shot Bob, and you're watching Professional Sports Cards. Hey, by the way, go buy my rookie card.